In this video, we'll be creating a geometry node system using one of the newer nodes called the Raycast node. We'll be using it to find the edges of our target and create a visual light show spectacle loosely based on this awesome video by McLaren. So let's get started and let's get into it. which you can download for free from my Patreon. So go ahead and do that right now before you follow along with this tutorial. So it opens up like this and we will start off by adding in a new object on which we'll create our geometry node system. So I'm going to hit shift A over here and choose a plain object. And then over here, click new to create a new geometry node system. Now I'm going to start off by creating the curve array, which is basically a stack of curves, which we'll use to project our data on. So let's remove our group input here and let's start off by adding in a curve line. Plug that into the group output and you will now have one single line here. I'm going to change some of these parameters. So let's remove this from the Z and let's set this to two and the start point to negative two. Okay, so now we have our curve line set up nicely. All right, so now we need to create an array out of these. So I'm going to add in an instance on points node, which we'll use to basically do this. Now, I don't want to use this as the points, but I want to use this as the instance. So I'm going to plug it into the instance here, plug this into the group output. Now for the points, I'm going to add in another line object. And in this case, I want to add in a mesh line. Now, why you say mesh line? That's because we can use this resolution resolution function. So instead of offset, we'll use endpoints. And instead of count, we'll use resolution. And if we now plug this in here, okay, well, let's set this to five meters. So what it will do now is it will create a line every one meter for a total of five meters. So basically five lines added on top of the original one, by the way. So that makes six in total, but still, yeah, you see this works. So what I want to do is I want to change this resolution and I'm going to set it to a very low number. So let's start off with a 0.1 and maybe increase this later on. I think we will. Um, Let's, you know, let's just leave this at 0 0.1. Eh, whatever. Let's set it to 0 0.05. So we have a lot of these lines now. And what we want to do next is we want to create a way for these lines to move in this direction. So what we're going to do basically is we want to create these lines going in this direction. And we want to create several instances of these along of this line. Basically, we'll do this using the same technique we just did over here. So what we want to do is we want to duplicate this instance on points node. And again, don't use this as the points, but use it as the instance. So plug this into the instance and plug this into the group output. So we want to just duplicate the mesh line node. So select it, hit shift D to duplicate it and move it over here. Plug this into the points. Oh, my bad. So plug this into the points node and you will see something's going on. And it's definitely not doing what we want. That's because it's moving in the wrong direction. So let's reset everything to zero here. Let's set a resolution to a higher number for now for five or so. And what we want to do is we want to change the end location for the Y because we wanted to move along this green Y axis. I'm going to move it in this direction. And we can do this by actually taking this Y value and pushing it into the negative. And I'm going to set it to negative 10, which will create two more instances of our curve array. Now, look what happens if I try to move the other Y value. It will just push them forward. And this is basically the premise of our lines moving across our object. So I'm going to set the resolution to be a bit lower, basically sort of lessening this gap over here. So if we set this to four, um, which will be the exact distance of our lines, so two and two, it will just completely fill the gap, which is not what I want. So I'm going to set it to 4.5 or so, and we should be good to go. All right, now we need a way to animate this. And like we did in the previous video and in many before, we can either use a uh, driver if we're using an older version of uh, Blender. But luckily, since one of the newer updates, we have this scene time node, which we're going to use. So let's just take our scene time node, take our um, frame here, and let's plug that into the start location. See what happens. Okay, so something's happening. Uh, it's uh, just not going in the right direction. And because we are once again changing a float value to a vector value, we want to add in a combined XYZ node and define the axis we are doing this on. So in this case, the Y. And now this is working just fine. We do need some control, however, over the speed. So I'm just going to add in another math node, plug it in between, set it to divide. And in this case, I'm going to use the value of seven, but feel free to use anything that you want. Seven works fine for me. The lower you go, the faster it is. The higher you go, the slower it is. So choose a value that works for you. All right, so this is working and it's animating. Now, what I want to do, however, is all of these lines have the exact same length. And I don't want that. I want them to be random because it looks more 
interesting uh, when all of these lights are moving across our object in this way. And what we can do is in this array that we basically created, so the, the original array of curves going upward, we can change this Y value to define the length of our curves even more. And what I want to do is I want to change each of these individually. And we can do this by using a random value node down here and just plug this into the scale. Now it will do it on all three axes. And since our curves are one dimensional, um, this will work just fine. If you want to make sure nothing strange happens, let's just make sure we plug in a combine XYZ in between here as well and set this to the Y as well. I'm going to go for 1.25 here and we get some of these lines which are now completely filled, but others which are very small and others which are sort of lining up. So lots of randomness and that's exactly what I want. All right, so we now have a bunch of these curves and we don't want curves, we want points. And there's actually a very handy node to do this. So it's called the curve to points node. So look that up, plug that in between, and it will convert all of your curves to points. Now I want each of these curves to have about 500 points. They are a bit big though. So we also need a point radius node, set point radius. And I'm gonna set these to be 0.003, which is very, very small. But if I now go over to the rendered view, so I'll hold Z and go over to rendered view, you can't see them. And that's because they don't have any material defined to them. So basically our scene is black, our spheres, or points are black, so uh, everything's invisible. So let's just add in the final node of our complete geometry node setup, which is the set material node. I'm gonna plug that in between. And we have the material called lights here. I've already set that up in the base file, but just make sure you use that and you should be good to go. Why is it not working? Because we need a realized instances node. Now what this does is basically tell Blender, okay, all of these curves are their own realized instances and we want to convert all of these into points and then set the radius for these points. So in this way, we can make sure that everything has its own point. Now, if we zoom out, you will see we now have all of these colored lines. Now I'm going to add in a frame, select all of our nodes here and just plug it in there. Now we can move the frame and let's just label it. So I open up this window with N and then give it a label and I'm going to call it curve slash point array. So what's next? We want to tell Blender, okay, we have all of these points, but we want to move them. So as always, use a set position node and we want to move them to be lined up with any target that we choose. So first of all, let's add in our set position node. This helps you move all of these points to any place that you want. You can even move them individually if you have the right input for that. So this is where our handy raycast node comes into play. Let's just take our raycast node here. And what we want to do is we want to first set a target. So I'm going to add in an object info node. Take that in here. And what we can do is with the eyedropper, we can select any of these targets. So for example, I have this car object, which you saw in the beginning. Um, and the car object is actually one piece. So I'll show you real quick. This is the car object. And as you can tell, it's very, very ugly, um, but it works fine for this tutorial purpose. So it was a nice model of a McLaren car, uh, which I did a remesh on. So basically I used this remesh modifier to combine it all into one sort of blobby object, um, which we'll use to project our data on. So with the car as the object selected for the target geometry, what we want to do now is we want to take the hit distance and we want to use this as the offset. It did something. It found the target, so the car in this case, and it changed the points based on the hit distance. Now they are going in the wrong direction. So what I want to do is I want to move them on the X. So one on the X, there you go. So it's just moving uh, on the X, at least the rays are. So let me go back real quick and show you what's going on. If we go into top view here, you won't be able to tell but over here on this Y axis, we have all of our curves and what they are doing is they are now shooting rays in just one direction. In this case, in the X direction. So all of these points, all 500 per line, they are shooting rays, which are invisible uh, into this direction and looking for a target. And in this case, the target is our car here. So if you wonder how long the length of these rays is, it's about 100 meters, which is, it says over here. You can shorten these or make them longer if your object is not hit. So if you're a very, very big object, make sure to change the ray length so your object is actually being hit. All right, so with that out of the way, the rays are still going in the X direction, but the position data is still converted from a load value into a 
vector value. So as always, what we want to do, yep, you know it, combine X, Y, Z, plug that in between, make sure it's specified to only the X axis, and there you go. We now have one half of a car. Now, I do feel the lines are a bit too few. I'm gonna add in a few more. So with the mesh line over here, I'm gonna set the resolution to something like a 0.02, just get in a bunch more of these lines. So that's looking pretty, pretty good. And this is how we use the Raycast node. Now, if I rotate my view here and you will see something that might surprise you, and that's basically all of the other points. So they are displaced for exactly 100 meters and they are all over there. And you can see the cutout of the car, which is the points that are actually uh, being hit. So they are over here, but the other ones are all the way over there. And um, it's performance wise, not a great thing because Blender is still rendering all of these points, even though we'll use a camera angle in which they aren't visible. So what we want to do is want to remove all of these points, which are not actually being hit. And to do that, we have the delete geometry node, which we'll plug in before doing the set position node. Then if we take the is hit here and we plug that into the selection, Blender will know, okay, all of these points, and in this case, it's sort of doing the wrong way because basically all of these points are the points which aren't being hit. Um, they are now there and all the points that are hit are deleted and we need to invert this in a way and we actually have boolean math for this so let's just look up a boolean math node plug that in between and in this case set it to not so basically meaning every point that's not hit i don't know why that works but okay every point that's not hit um show that so now we have just one half of a car all of the other points are gone so it's very very optimized for the computer to work with one half over here and we want to create the other half basically from the same so what we can do is we can just take another set position node duplicate it over here let's take the same delete geometry output over here get a join geometry node plug that in there and combine these two together. These are still centered because we don't have any of the raycast data imported there. So we can just take the combine XYZ and plug that into the offset here as well. So now we have double the points on the same location and we just need to mirror them. To do that, we are going to use a factor math node, which you can plug in between and we'll just multiply everything negative one on the X axis. So not add, but multiply and there you go. So every value should now be the exact negative of the original value, basically creating two halves of our model over here. Now I have several objects here and in, um, in our scene, which are already set up for you guys. So if we just re-enable the ground object here and we now hit spacebar, you will see all of these lines moving across our object and it's looking, well, at least in my opinion, it's looking really, really cool. And as I said, this is completely procedural based on any object. So over here, I have also some different targets in our scene. So if we just delete the car target and instead we take the Suzanne model there you go still worked fine you gotta love procedural stuff right and if we delete the suzanne and we take the twist taurus there you go also works very very nicely now for the final render i also created a volume so let's just re-enable that one and i'm gonna select the car again render settings should all be set up for you guys i used 2560 so 2k in this case but feel free to use a regular full hd um resolution 30 fps of course and I would recommend rendering this out as a PNG. It might take a little while. So uh, doing this from a PNG standpoint uh, allows you to restart your renders later on and then just, you know, combine them within the video editor of Blender to get your video output in the end. All right, so that wraps up the video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. Project file for this video is available on my Patreon, so please consider becoming a patron. It really helps out the channel a lot. And uh, obviously the free version, so the base file is also available for free on the Patreon as well. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. A big thanks to the following patrons for supporting the channel. 